in the headlines. Bandit killed two burn houses church in fresh Kaduna village attack. Economic and Financial Crimes Commission challenges court order to release Obiano's passport. Tunde Bakari declares full president, says he remains a suitable candidate to address Nigeria's problems. Ukrainian leader Zelensky seeks peace despite expected Russian attacks as he renews his plea for more weapons. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I'm Zainab Bala. Hello and a warm welcome. Now, bandits have attacked a day village of Kutura Station in Tatatu Ward of Kajuru local government area of Kaduna State, killing two indigents of the community and burning down houses. One of the male victims had his head and hands chopped off after he was killed by the bandits during the attack. The attack is yet to be confirmed by the police or Kaduna State Government, but a former chairman of Kajuru local government area told Channels Television that the bandits first attacked some of the adjoining communities on Tuesday, burning down houses and shooting sporadically within the community. He said that the bandits later returned in Ade community, also under Katuru station on Friday afternoon, and carried similar attack and in the process shot two persons dead. Now, insecurity in Nigeria has ruined the lives of many and subjected several others to lifelong depression, agony and economic deprivation. Kazana State, which is still having its own share of insecurity, has lost hundreds of lives, millions of animals to rustling with property worth billions of naira destroyed. In this report, Abdullah Yamadi says thousands of farming and animal rearing communities, among other things, have been devastated. The very few people remaining in these communities have gory tales of rape cases, armed robbery and other assaults. The absence of traditional institutions apart from those like schools, courts, police and other security outposts which have been sacked from the affected communities by insecurity worsens the likelihood of survival. For the past seven years, people in these ravaged communities neither go to farms nor rear animals. You see, anybody that tells you that uh, we can go to farm in this part of uh, Kasana State, especially the areas ravaged by this insecurity, is telling you lies. There's no way we can go to farms. The insecurity has developed and has continued to bedevil this, uh, our villages. Our villages have been ransacked, so we don't have any means of going to the farms. You see, we don't even have the oxes. We use oxes in most of the farming activities in this part of the country. And uh, our oxes, our cows have been uh, uh, rustled. We don't have the means. We don't have anything to sell to go to farms, to buy fertilizer, to do anything that will support us in going to the farms. How much more of the issue of insecurity we are facing, where, where we don't have anything, and uh, these people are almost everywhere. To these children, the future is not promising, and they no longer go to schools like their colleagues in other parts of the country. People that were once comfortable are now rendered poor, with many of them begging for arms in cities and neighboring towns. Even at that, their lives as beggars in the cities promise nothing other than vulnerability to danger and other crimes. We are afraid. Both the students and the teachers are afraid of going to school. So we cannot go to school uh, because this insecurity has uh, ravaged all of almost everything. Most of residents here cannot even have the comfort of discharging their religious obligations, such as five daily prayers, fasting, or Jumat prayers with ease. Majority or almost everyone here must pay levy to guarantee their continued stay 
in the community. You see, uh, it is almost time for us to start uh, conveying manure to our farms, but uh, there is nothing we can do because these people are almost everywhere. They can pick you at any point and uh, they can kill you at any time. So we can't go to our farms now and uh, I don't think uh, anybody can dare doing that. The above scenario, many believe, calls for more government commitments to restore lasting peace in the affected communities to enable farmers to produce enough food to avert food crisis. Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Crossed Television News, Kazina. A total of 126 refugees who fled their home for persistent bandit attacks in Giwa local government area require quick medical attention. The camp director, Idris Sali Giwa, who disclosed this when our correspondent visited the camp, said most of the patients were females and children. The camp director said already five have given birth in the camp, most of those who are affected by trauma, hypertension, high blood pressure and malaria. Saleh Giwa explained that out of the number, 10 have been admitted for intensive medical care, while others could not be taken to hospital due to shortage of food. He explained that in the Laleha in Kamwa villages, many have been orphaned and widowed following the deaths of their husbands and fathers. Giwa explained that in the Laleh village, 16 persons were killed leaving behind 30 wives and 86 children. While in Beriberi, 10 men have been killed who had a total of 17 wives with 80 children who are now orphans. According to the camp director in Hainkamwa village, 8 people have been killed leaving behind 16 wives and 66 children. While in Anguar Baku, a total of 5 males lost their lives to the bandits and left behind 10 wives with 66 children. He, however, stated that the local government council and some other voluntary donors helped in running the camp while awaiting the state emergency management agency, SEMA, for further assistance. I have more than 300 people that we are sleeping here with them. And there are some that are inside town. They used to come in the morning and then during the night after we finish our ta'alim because we are doing ta'alim from 10 to from 9:30 to 11:30 here so in the in the square islamic lecture because we are in the month of ramadan together with them and some of them are not are not sleeping here because they have houses they rent houses inside town and some people give them free of charge and they have relatives some of the have relatives that are staying there with them but here we, in our camp we have almost 300 people that we are sleeping with them most of them are females and children and old people because the males that are here are not much our security is 100 percent because we are near the police station here the dpo of your local government is doing his best you are the bishop uh, sp muhammad bashir Murder. He is doing his job because he used to send policemen to sleep without he, with us here. It is the local government chairman that supply food for them in the initial stage. We are here because we were forced to flee our homes after bandits invaded our village. We have been here for about two weeks. My name is Aminatu. We were chased from our homes by bandits. They killed about 14 people. They burned our house. We want the government to come to our aid and secure our villages. My husband married three of us. Now he has been kidnapped. Now, Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has kicked against an interim order made ex parte by the Okha Division of the Federal High Court, granting the former governor of Anambra State, Chief Willie Obiano, leave to travel abroad to the United States of America to attain to his medical appointment on the grounds of denial of fair hearing. This is according to a statement signed by EFCC spokesperson Wilson Ojere. 
Obiano is being investigated by the EFCC for alleged corruption and money laundering during his tenure as an state governor from 2014 to 2022. He was arrested on March 17th at the Murtala Mohammed Airport in Lagos as he attempted to leave the country hours after handing over to his successor, Professor Chukuma Soludo. He had earlier been on the commission's watch list. Still ahead, serving overseer of the Citadel Global Community Church, formerly known as Latter Rain Assembly, Pastor Tunde Bakare, on Saturday declared his ambition to run for president in 2023, saying he remains the best suitable candidate to address Nigeria's problems. Bakari said this at the virtual meeting on Vlane Project 16 to Nigerians in Diaspora, with the theme The Portrait of a New Nigeria, organized by the PTB for Nigeria in Diaspora Group. In his address, the cleric warned that ahead of the 2023 general elections, the South has been set against the North, while Christians are set against Muslims. He, however, said he remains the rallying point to restore order in the country. Similarly, Minister of Transportation Brotimi Amechi on Saturday joined the 2023 presidential race. He declared his interest at a Thanksgiving service organized by the River State Chapter of the All Progressive Congress. Amechi, who is from South South, had severally denied being interested in the race before his official declaration on Saturday. The former River State Governor becomes the sixth APC aspirant to officially declare his intention to contest. Others are Bola Tinubu Southwest, Oji Uzokalu Southeast, Racha Sokorocha Southeast, Dave Omahi Southeast, and Yahya Bello North Central. My speech today is titled Forward with Courage. Fellow Nigerians, I stand before you today to declare my intention and submit my application to serve as your next president. After more than two decades in the public arena, I had wanted to go on holiday and spend more time with my family before charting a new course outside politics. But at 56, but I'm 56 years old, and a member of the generation born after independence, who has seen the good, the bad, and the ugly of Nigeria. I'm compelled by the urgency of our present challenges to place my experience and proven capacity at the service of the nation at the highest level. To sustain and intensify present efforts at solving our national problems. Our democracy must ensure the emergence of a leadership that is equipped with broad experience in governance to ensure stability and continuity. To sustain our democracy and preserve our unity, we need a steady hand and a passion for success in a nation that remains united to pursue prosperity for all Nigerians. I believe that despite our cultural differences, we remain one people under one God. We may speak different languages or worship in different ways, but we all want the same things, a better life for our children, the ability to support our families, the freedom to live in peace without fear for our lives or properties. I have never been the type who folds his arms and complains about inadequacies I see around me. I have always jumped in with both feet to do whatever I can to help, to try and bring relief to those suffering, to work to make things right where I see wrong. If you elect me as your president, I promise to play my part to the best of my ability. The National Rescue Movement has inaugurated its national executives to oversee the party's affairs ahead of the 2023 general elections. Speaking at the inauguration ceremony in Abuja, the newly elected national chairman of the party, Isaac Udi, promised to wrestle power from the ruling All Progressive Congress APC come 2023. Udi also decried the poor state of the economy, the insecurity situation of the country, and promised that his party will do better if given the mandate. To rescue them from the hands of people that lacks fear of God. To rescue
rescued them from the hands of people that have no conscience, from people who could not give them security, electricity, affordable housing, good roads, affordable and the quality education in our public schools, good health care system, among others. This time, it is very difficult for the masses to travel by road because of the unchecked insecurity in every part of the country. The train system is no longer safe, judging by the series of attacks on the sector in recent times, more especially the ugly incidents on Abuja Kaduna corridor. This is the only political party that has only one summarized agenda for Nigerian citizens, home and abroad, and that agenda is to rescue our great country, Nigeria, and Nigerians from this unaccept unacceptable, stagnant situation we find ourselves. You're watching Trust TV News update coming up. Trade to make up the unavailability of white collar jobs. Details of this story and more after the break. Do stay. As the 2023 elections draw near, remember, evil prospers when good men and women only wish for peace, but never take a step to make peaceful elections happen. Are you a father? Are you a mother? What are you saying to your children as elections approach? Have you warned them not to let themselves be used to cause violence? Have you explained to them what the consequences of electoral violence might be? Do your part to make peaceful elections happen. Talk to your children. Protect them from unscrupulous politicians who want to put them in harm's way while their own children are comfortable at home, within and outside the country. Let's join hands to make 2023 elections peaceful. This message is from the National Orientation Agency, NOAA. Welcome back. If you are just joining us, this is Trust TV News Update, a recap of our top stories. Bandits attack a day village of Katura Station in Kajuru, local government area of Kaduna State, killing two indigents of the community and burning down houses. EFCC kicks against the court order granting former governor of Anambra State, Willie Opiano, leave to travel abroad for medical appointment. Still ahead, social media has been identified as a tool that is capable of destroying norms and religious values if not properly harnessed by the Muslims Ummah, especially the youth. The Registrar of the Joint Admission and Matriculation Board, Jam Professor Ishak Oloidi, said this in an Anwar Ramadan lecture in Kaduna. And cultural values, to the extent that some used to be taboos, have now become norms. The cumulative effect of social media on our nation was unquantifiable as it has damaged our value system and the national ethics. The collective resolve to ensure that government does not regulate social media has further given the impetus to the widespread acceptability of its content. So what we do individually as a nation Every person should first take care of himself and his own immediate family. If everybody will take care of his immediate family, his children, what are, what are they doing? His uh, household, what are they doing with, the, with this gadget that is new? The theme of the topic, the social media and effects on morality, is out. The social media has become a companion to mankind globally. It has its positive effects, it has its negative effects. Our responsibilities in the right order. From home, these things can be treated. From primary schools, 
empowering the local government to make sure these things work in the communities, then we can begin to get the proper foundation that would be very difficult for anyone to dissuade into bad, uh, immoral behavior. Elsewhere, Abia State Governor Okezie Okbeazu is encouraging youth to take trade as a way of making up for the unavailability of white-collar jobs. This comes after he was certified a shoemaker. Recall that in May 2021, the governor enrolled as a trainee at the Aba Futwe Academy, where he learned the art of shoe design and coupling. In an exclusive interview with Trust TV in Aba, the governor shows off his self-made slippers upon completion of the training. He believes this will encourage the youth to acquire skills aside academic qualification. Uh, by profession, but it's a, it's, a, it's a big shape. These are the shoes I, I produced, you know. Uh, <laughs> Good finishing, I may say. Exactly. And I, <laughs> exactly. You know, when a lot of people saw your videos and your pictures enrolling, registering for, yeah. you know, to train for yeah. the tree making thing. And I, 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 I'm very serious about it because... A lot of uh, people would think maybe uh, it's just... Uh, no. How, how, how can it be that I don't have a skill? Apart from teaching biochemistry. How can it be that I'm, I'm embedded in an environment where... Where, where people are doing things and I can't do it. I can't, I can't do a shoe. It would be a big shame. A lot, a lot Again. Of, a lot of young Nigerians will think, well, I mean, you are the governor, so why are you even learning a skill? Uh, you are educated. You got your PhD from when you were 30. So why are you even, you know, learning that, a that, skill? That, that, that is the mistake we, we make. Um, every person from this part of Nigeria, my thinking is that the person should have an additional skill. I had a choice to choose between shoemaking and tailoring, but I chose shoemaking. Um, because we're trying to create an ecosystem for shoe manufacturing. Really very interesting. Now, the federal government has said the cause of the collapse of the national grid that plunged the nation into darkness is being investigated. The ministry in a statement said the Nigeria Electricity Regulatory Commission, the operator of the national grid, is in the process of restoring supply. According to the statement, the federal government was working to deliver on the much-needed reforms, including SCADA, that are critical in improving the capacity and reliability of the national grid. The collapse is the third in a month, but the federal government assured that it has taken steps to address the problem to avoid a reoccurrence. And on the foreign scene, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says he's committed to pressing for peace despite Russian attacks on civilians and he renewed his plea for more weapons ahead of an expected surge in fighting in the country's east. Zelensky made the comments a day after at least 52 people were killed in an attack on a train station in the eastern city of Kramatorsk. And as evidence of civilian killings came to light after Russian troops failed to seize the capital Kyiv where he has hunkered down. Zelensky said he's confident Ukrainians would accept peace despite the horrors they have witnessed in the more than six week long war. Meanwhile, Russian troops that withdrew from northern Ukraine are now regrouping for what is expected to be an intensified push to retake the eastern Donbas region, including the besieged port city of Maripol that Ukrainian fighters are striving to defend. And in sports, first ever para sports festival kicks off in Abuja, where para athletes across Nigeria converge for the event. Trust TV's Adeni Adishafe has more. 21 states, including FCT, participate in the opening ceremony of Nigerian para games that kick off at Moshuda Biola Stadium, Abuja. Para athletes in different colors file out to herald first ever para sports festival in Nigeria. Minister of Youth and Sport Development, Sunday Dari, accompanied by Minister of Women Affairs, Dame Pauline Talent, while declaring open para festival, says talents will be discovered as Nigerian prepares for Commonwealth Games, and hopefully some of them will represent Nigeria in Birmingham. Well, this is the very first national para sport. And like I said, it's trying to bring the, the mandate of the Ministry of Youth and Sports in alignment with uh, the vision of Mr. President. Under Mr. President, President Mamadou Buhari, we've had the Disability Act signed into law. We've had the establishment of uh, the Disability Commission. At the National Assembly, we have committees chaired by our lawmakers. So this in, uh, is in alignment with that. We believe, like I said, there's ability in their disability. The most recent Olympics, we saw what they did. They gave us our greatest number of gold medals. 
Previous Olympic, they did the same thing. At the Commonwealth, the same thing. If there's no competition, no athletes can improve and excel. And we felt that they deserve their own special uh, national sports competition. Don't also forget, in December last year, this ministry created for the very first time a department for para-athletics. Chairman, local organizing committee Peter Nelson expressed joy that para games keeps off on a good note as a lot of Nigerians support the cause to have a festival for para sports. I don't know how to express my sincere appreciation for the turnout first and foremost and seeing close to around four to five honorable ministers and um, about three chief of um, staff being um, present at this occasion. Uh, it gives a very great omen, meaning that the Nigerian government are actually interested in this. Um, their being around um, has really uh, set the ball rolling. Para-athlete Aiku Onushala from Undo State says his expectation is to win gold while competing in three different para-events at para-games. I was so impressed that the Federal Minister of uh, Youth and Sport organized the first para festival. So my expectation from my state is that we are all prepared and we came here to win a lot of medals. Para sports festival, we have para athletes competing in 15 events, which includes para athletics, para swimming, deaf sport, and more. That's sport news. I am Adeni Ajishafe. Well, there you go. Thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I'm Zainab Bella. Thanks for your time and company.